diary you forgot about and published it? Or how would you feel if that song you spilled your guts writing only for you showed up on Spotify for the world to hear? Every time I shed tears And the last past years This is the story of a folk music masterpiece never meant for public ears. In fact, the album Color Green may have ended up in the trash if it weren't for a curious son who discovered an ancient reel-to-reel spindle in a box, delicately threaded the old tape, and pushed play. It's this beautiful creation, but (laughs) what was it to you? I think I had forgotten it. That people are drawn to this makes me feel hopeful for the world. I lost something in the Ahead, Sabila Byer, the shy folk singer with the devoted cult following, breaks her silence for the big ponder. I'm Carol McKinley, and this is Sabila's Sacred Self. Google Sabila Byer, and you won't find an interview. That's how she wants it. I lucked out, though. She decided I was okay upon spotting a cartoon-like painting of a mother bird on the wall over my shoulder during a Saturday morning Zoom. That's when she opened up about her belated big break, which began as a surprise at her 60th birthday party in Western Massachusetts. Right. My, my, my dear children threw me a birthday party at the legendary Dreamaway Lodge 
<laughs> in our neck of the woods. And they were in people, friends were invited to do acts of juggling or dancing or poetry or anything as gifts, you know, and it was pretty wild. It, it, it was, was awesome. It was so awesome. Awesome turned to a full when at the end of the night, Sabila Byer's well-meaning family sprung their surprise, playing an intimate album she recorded during a painful time in her youth for all the guests to hear. Her son, Robbie, remembers they then handed out copies of the recordings as party favors. The year? 2006. So I basically edited the thing and uh, mixed it and uh, made this birthday CD. And we can ask Sibylla what she, before, before <laughs> I think what happened, but I'm sure it wasn't all positive. <laughs> Happy well, birthday. My, Here's a hundred CDs that we're giving to everyone. <laughs> uh, and then... At the end of it, I had no idea. This CD has been played, and you play it. I'd been a gal in one dream, frequented my late afternoon, summer in New York City. And I am embarrassed, I'm livid, I'm angry. Why, why these old these old things of my life and goodness? And, uh, and, and I was, uh, it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> and then I had another drink and another drink, and then I sang with him. So, right? I danced with Michel the Waltz, right? You, mm-hmm. you played you that. We, and I danced with my husband. And you sang, well. we sang one too. Yes, and we sang one too. So finally I calmed down. But I, I was, um, is that how you felt it too? Yeah, you, it was like, you know, it was like, um, you know, you're kind of, yes, embarrassed and shocked, but also then tickled and kind of, um, and I think the, the joy came actually later when, when you, she started realizing, because, you know, then all these people in the community had it and she was getting all this feedback of how awesome it was and how people were moved by it and how, um, you know, so that, you know, it was like shock. And then later, you know, the, the kind of you know, being OK with it. Sabila's musical revival might have been short lived, except for one guest at the birthday party who was blown away. Jay Maskus is a singer songwriter for the alternative rock band Dinosaur Jr. He shared that CD with a friend with a record label in Athens, Georgia. All right. Hi, I'm Andrew Rieger, and I am the co owner of Orange Twin Records. And I also have played in a band called Elf Power since the mid 1990s. And um, yeah, so I'm here to tell you a little bit about how I first encountered the Sibylla Buyer Color Green album and how we came to put it out on our label. Yeah, it was kind of went from Robbie to Jay to us. And we were actually, my band was on tour and we were staying at Jay's house in Amherst, Massachusetts. And I just remember waking up and hearing this music and he, he, that he was playing because he was making coffee for us and just being like mesmerized by it. What was it that made you decide not to add a bunch of background instrumentals and other voices? Was there a discussion about how to release it? It would kind of feel sacrilegious to uh, augment it with a bunch of modern overdubs. It would, I think it would sound weird. Just like that, Sibylla Byer's intimate soundtrack, sung for no one, became an overnight success. The album Color Green only took 33 years to surface. She was completely unknown in 2006. And so, you know, we we pressed up uh, a bunch of records and a bunch of CDs. And I mean, yeah, there have been albums by artists that we've done that for and nobody's really bought them and we've lost money, but you know, that's kind of the risk that you take running a label. And if you, if you love music, uh, you know, an album enough and, and really believe in it, then you just kind of take that risk. So. And why did you believe in her? The songs to me are just, are just amazing. You know, I, I feel like she's really good at kind of balancing these really emotionally complex and dark songs and then balancing that with like these other songs that are just a slice of life of her family life where she's talking about taking her kids to the zoo and cooking dinner and going to work and having the cat sit on her lap and i just think it's really unique in that in that way has anybody of you two got half a mind to go to the zoo tonight won't you Think we had fun, my daughter, my son, my daughter, my son, my daughter, my son, my daughter, my son, one by one. 
Today, 15 years after that cringeworthy birthday party reveal, critics compare Sabila's style to Leonard Cohen, Phoebe Bridgers, and Joni Mitchell. Her admirers include Lee Ronaldo of Sonic Youth and the actor Elliot Page. I grew up in declivities. To understand this story, you must go back 50 years to Stuttgart, Germany, in the early 1970s when the young actress and mother recorded 14 songs. There were times in my life when I felt mad and deprived. I lost something in the hills. What's that about? I wish I knew. I don't know what I lost. Uh, you know what comes to me at the moment? I think, I hope, I was, uh, maybe it was a prayer for I lost myself. Finally, I lost myself. At night, while her family slept, Sabila Beyer made music with her rich alto and acoustic guitar. You're in the moment with Sabila 50 years ago as she practiced by the light of the moon. This eventually became the song Tonight. Tonight, when I came home from work, heard tonight. When I came home from work. So he had a, a good, this, this piece of good equipment for, for, for recording. So I could use that and I propped it up. I propped the, the microphone, I think, right, Ravi? I propped it up on a few books and figured out how this would work best. And I would sit and record m- many times a song. Yeah, they, you know, it's in my DNA, those songs. But after several years of intense creative songwriting, she packed the evidence of her heartache in a box and forgot about it. Except for four single cassettes Sabila's late husband Michiel made and saved. He kept one to play at home, and then he passed those other three to close friends, including celebrated German filmmaker Wim Wenders. He might be best known in America for his film, Paris, Texas. Mikhail, also a film producer, died in 2020. My dad was, you know, was also um, a musician. He he was a saxophone player and flute player um, when he was, you know, 18, 19 and um, played in bands and, you know, wrote some songs on piano. He was, you know, a very musical person, loved music so much. I think he would have enjoyed if I would have made a career out of it more or something, right? You think, Robbie? Definitely. I mean, he he's, he was a music lover and he heard how good the music was and how unusual it was, how beautiful her voice was. And of course, you know, there were there were often people um, around the house, musicians, artists and filmmakers. And it was, you know, often the guitars would come out and people would play and, and these songs would would come out and people would love them. So they were just kind of locked in this kind of, at our house. They never left our house, right? Locked in the house until one day, an influential friend heard Sabila's music playing during a phone call. A filmmaker, a friend called and said, what's playing in the background? I want to hear this music. He was in Stuttgart the next day. And so Hans Geisendorf came the, the next day and wanted to make a TV show and, and, and said, you must go on the road and, and, and Virgin Records and, you know, the whole nine yards. And I had no idea about what's going on in the world or, or, or music world or, or folk world or something like that. And our friend said, I am not touching it. You have everything on it. The bass line is on there. Everything, the the... the uh, the harmonies, I, the, it needs nothing, he said. And then I said, well, I can't do this alone, so no thank you. <laughs> so there were no lights or stage, no bowls of chosen M&Ms for her dressing room. So it didn't happen. And I didn't really want to do that either. I think our lives were very full already. Sabila's star never born. But three decades after her music was retired and the family had long since relocated, making the move from Germany to the United States, Robbie, now an adult, discovered the music in a box of family stuff. And then I went up and found the reels. I went into the attic, found the reels, and I have a recording studio. And then I was like, what's on these reels? And then I On the reels, Robbie recognized the low, soothing voice of his mother. Softly in 
from a heart of mine I talk to you. By this time, he was a professional music producer and he was electrified by the honesty of her long lost recordings. These songs do stand the test of time. They're not just, you know, the ramblings of a, of a young, confused woman. They're actually, you know, it's, it's a, they're very deep and they're, um, they're timeless. For the second time, Sibila turned down record deals and concert tours. Orange Twin has sold out numerous CD and LP pressings. Can you imagine the pressure she must have felt to produce an encore to the music she created in what was basically another lifetime? The way I remember her feelings about the album was, how are these people listening? Or what do they see in this, these kind of like, you know, not rantings, but, you know, this is just like some, some depressed 20 year old because of so much time had passed for her. You know, she felt like, who is this person that was this? But in a way, what more needs to be said, right? <laughs> right. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. You know, why I have five more albums? Today, a growing number of Sibila's worshippers want more from the reclusive poet songwriter who never played a single gig. That is intriguing to people about her is that there's not that much information and she's not going on Instagram and putting pictures of what she ate for lunch every day. And nobody knows that much about her and that just kind of adds to the, to, to the mystery, I think. There were times in my life when I felt mad and deprived and You know, you think about what, what you kept away from the world for... 30 years, and then it suddenly was out on your 60th birthday. It's like someone saw your your innermost self. It's, a, it's scary. Well, it's also a sacred space, kind of, I feel. Uh, you know, where, where you're seen or heard is always a sacred space. Remember the day when I left home to buy some food. In her rare interview with The Big Ponder, Sabila describes what led to her very first song, Remember the Day, which she wrote during those nighttime serenade sessions from 1970 to 1973 during a gloomy winter moment. It's myself in a painful February mood. You know, many young people, many people have dark stretches. And that was a specific uh, or especially dark stretch. Considering if one shouldn't die or if one should, sun was high. To get her out of her funk, a friend proposed a road trip to buy food for her mother's restaurant, which was in a train station of a cog car. And she came by that morning and said, oh, come on, come with me, and pulled me, so to speak, from under the bed. Uh, that's how it felt. And I finally agreed and said, okay, I'll come. And we drove to Strasbourg and, and first had lunch in the Renard, which, which is uh, the, 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 the fox, the red fox. I remember that. And truthfully, first she goes to the bathroom, then I go to the bathroom, and, and then we come back together and say, Did you, do you think what I thought? And I said, yeah. <laughs> Let's go across the Alps. I have no idea where that came from, but youth is that way, you know, it's wonderful, or, or it's probably still that way, but we're not open to it. After getting lost in fog, a morning on the beach, and a run-in with some German police officers who thought the flowers in their trunk were marijuana, Sibylla returned from the road trip refreshed, but shaken, at the choice she almost made. And I come home, and I say, what happened? How can you be going from how to get rid of yourself without committing suicide, kind of, to, to all, is, all is good. And, and then this song fell out. And I found me on the road to Genoa. I think the same day or, or next day, yeah. Just fell out, huh? Just fell out, yeah, because I said, Sibylla, you have to remember this day. We please remember this day. Hmm? And have and you remembered the day through the years? Have you thought about that day? Not often enough. Mm. And Robbie, Robbie sometimes reminds me. I think you said, Robbie, that's your favorite song, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Robbie manages her website, fielding notes from listeners as far away as Montenegro, Argentina, China, New Zealand. Her aching lyrics have inspired some fans to become musicians themselves. A few have named their children after her. You know, yeah, the, the bombing of, of Syria and the escape from it, you know, I, it was always that it's the end of certain songs move certain people or now one came, it got me through the grief of losing my father and you know, this is now I feel I feel a little unsettled about it all. And maybe that's why it's resonating still or, or, or you know, as opposed to I have a plan. I want to make a song and I want to conquer mm. something. Get up some stairs. Says it's over now You're hearing Sibila actually composing a song called Gilbert from that original attic recording using an unorthodox songwriting technique. She's literally writing the song like moment, she's, she's, she's like in the moment and she like she says, she like feels something and maybe there's a word or an idea and she sings it and then she listens to where that wants to go and then both the music and the melody and the words, you know, kind of move together in this, in this way until the song is finished. <laughs> Well, it's different for, for different people. I think it's some uh, write lyrics first and then try to find music or bits by bits. Or uh, for me, it came out at, almost at the same time because you it's so much in there that it leads you by itself. It's a sense of, oh, this feeling or this word, this sound even wants to go there or, you know, it's it's without, without you know, ah, and then it feels right somehow. Which song were you just singing? Was that one of your songs? No, no, no. That was just the moment. Oh, oh, oh I, see. Yeah. I see. That was a song just for you, right there. <laughs> wow, I'm so privileged. Now, Robbie, you decided to come out with a songbook for your mom. Mm-hmm. Tell me about why you did that. I, as a musician. You know, there's many people who have covered her music and you can find YouTube videos of covers. And it always drives me crazy when they play it, quote unquote, wrong. You know, they they play it with the wrong chords and they don't have, you know, they don't have the right voicings. And so I just cared enough about it to have at least the people, you know, who want to learn it the right way that they can, you know, without having to spend hours and hours like I did figuring it out. (laughs) Sybil, how does that make you feel to hear that? I'm, 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 I'm in tears. Robbie's songs um, that he wrote them when he was 12 years old, they are my favorite songs. You should listen to them. I'm serious. Oh, look in the look water. Look in the water. Oh, look in the water. Da, da, da. Don't remember the lyrics, Mom? I'm offended. Yeah. <laughs> Help me. When you walk in. So, by request, ladies and gentlemen, dug from the Bayer Family Archives, this is the song Beginner, written and sung by Robbie when he was 12, a few years before the family left Germany for the U.S. Wonderful. <laughs> Robbie has his own career producing music for commercials, film, and TV, recently launching his second album. It's called Making Space. But his mother's music, even though it was released back in 2006, still eclipses his. I never did this on purpose, you know, it was just what was right that day. Uh, Did you write your lyrics down and read from lyrics when you were singing or did that come from inside? I I did write them down in little school, school notebooks (laughs) (laughs) together with with uh, with notes, shopping lists and and phone numbers and all that. (laughs) And then cigarette burns and so on, But because it was usually in the the hair when the cat hair I know (laughs) part of life. (laughs) <laughs> and, I, and, and that happened at night in my bedroom. So um, um, 
Yes, I wrote them down and I, um, many of them fell out just as they were. I was looking for rhymes, that is true sometimes. And because it was the English language, I love languages. Uh, so, so it was a, a joy for me. Uh, uh, but fine. what would rhyme with this? Ah, and then a rhyme like that opens a whole universe. Just mm-hmm. a, a, a new, of ideas. Yes, a new wor- world. Yes. So one night I sat down on a chair and I did that. Can we talk about the color green for a minute? It's about a green sweater, but it's not about a green right. sweater. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. I was knitting a sweater. It's almost like you're having a conversation with someone. In, in well, that's what, what it was. The album's title song, Color Green, is actually an homage to Wonderlust. Liberty's that you has got so many stars, but when you need help, After World War II, many young Germans like Sibylla were curious about the United States. Germany was divided into four parts after the war uh, by occupiers, uh, and we grew up in the American zone. So um, we had the GIs there occupy um, our parents' homes and so on. America at that time and the American literature and 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 the jazz music and 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 uh, rock and roll. Uh, America was a, a, a heroic uh, land for us back then. In 1981, Sibylla and her family did move from Germany to Western Massachusetts, which looks like a place she only imagined when she recorded those lyrics way back in post 60s Germany. Later on, I uh, I realized that it was prophetic because. There is, a, a, I think, a stretch of, of lyrics that says, I know, Father West, these hills exist, marked by apple trees, marked by a straight brook that leads me to wherever I wanted to. Oh, I know, Father West, these hills exist, marked by apple trees, marked by a straight brook that leads me wherever I wanted to. That this happened, we moved to the U.S. and it was into a landscape with with a- a- apple trees in the woods and a straight brook and, and, and all that. So many years later, so. Today, Sibylla's voice is one of 80 in her local community choir. It's called the Berkshire Lyric. We're all lucky to be to be together, and they still do this uh, every three weeks online together. At oh, least you do? warm ups, and then yeah, you can't sing together, but hmm. but then you listen to a piece like a Brahms Requiem or something, and you can sing your part. Do you play a guitar while they're doing it, or do you play any instruments for them? No, 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 no. no this is all uh, no, no, and they. They don't know about my my, my youth. <laughs> oh, they don't! How interesting. Most people don't. Think, thankfully, and I don't either. That's that's how you want it. Well, no, it's how it is. I don't want anything about it. Uh, I keep forgetting it because life um, has been rather full, you, you know. And then, oh yeah, that right. Sabila never copied anyone and doesn't follow popular music, so don't try and have a conversation with her about current folk singers. When I think about the song singer-songwriters today, I, I love Tracy Chapman. I don't know if you know who that is. Do you know who Tracy Chapman is? No, I don't. And I write she, won't, it down. she won't know anybody that you say. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever drive in a monster constitution? And find to reach a seaport and done is a solution. You should if you could. Sabila pressed pause on her music for half a century. But in just the past year, she's seen a lot of change. She lost her husband. She's been isolated during the pandemic. And the clock ticks. She feels like now she has something to say. I would like to write a song at least one that the, there's one that's called is T.S. Eliot. I grow old, I shall wear the bottom of my trousers rolled. Right, mm-hmm. 
is, is on the record. And I would like to write one it, and it would start probably with the same chords. Now I'm old, I do wear the bottom of my trousers rolled and I wade in the water and the far shore is near. Oh, you know, so, so I would like to write about um, old age or dying or, you know, uh, uh, of those things. To us, it's amazing that you were able to put something like this away. If Robbie hadn't have found it, it would have been still in the attic. Yeah, it would be okay with me. As I said before, it, I'm, I'm now feeling uh, uplifted by the fact that people uh, 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 are attracted to it because it, it makes me hopeful. The sacredness is rather the people who listen to it. Uh, a, a place where people listen and receive you. That is a sacred space, I think. I